see the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Brian, and today is Friday, September 22nd, 2023, and this is episode 528 of the Lots Project podcast, where we're defying norms and designing freedom. Today's episode is titled Lightning Changes Everything, Making Bitcoin Fast, and today I will be diving in a little bit to the Bitcoin Lightning Network, uh, what it is, why it's important, and how you can start get, get start using it. But first, let's grab a cup of coffee, catch up with what's going on, have a little chat, get everybody starting to get registered for that 10K, except it's 20K giveaway this morning, uh, and we'll dive into lightning in a little bit. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. How we doing, Pip? Pip was in early. Looks like Gingerbread might have been in even earlier, and um, the comments are gone. I don't know. Uh, sounds like Pip says Gingerbread's comments left the chat. He says, good morning and happy Friday and something about lawyers and lots to work with. I don't know what that was all about. MSU Rifle, thanks for swimming, swinging in this morning, dropping a comment. Uh, let's see, for the 10K giveaway today, uh, last week, let me explain what was going on with that. Last week, um, scrambling, old Brian Norton uh, jumped around to all his all of his accounts across the across the YouTubes and was uh, and Facebook and was entering and he bumped the bumped the entries way up over 10. And so when I spun, he had a, a, a weighted chance to win for sure. And he did. He um, he won, which he, the odds were in his favor. But uh, when I contacted him after, he said, yeah, just roll it in, roll it into next week. We're going to do 20K, 20,000 Satoshis this week. And uh, all you got to do is enter hashtag lightning. Hashtag lightning is going to be the hashtag today to get in. Morning, Joe Blakesley Acres. How we doing? Sorry, guys, I didn't set up the share screen this morning. So I will get that up here in just a second while we talk. And that will help later when I want to do the drawing. But here we go. Hashtag lightning to get into that 10K. Oh, I'm going to say it all day. It's going to be 20K, 20,000 Satoshis going away today if we get uh, we get 10 entries into that drawing today. So hit it in early and often. Hunter in on Twitch. Morning, Hunter. How are we doing? Hope everything is going well. And um, yeah, well, so we'll keep rolling. What do I have in the cup today? I don't think I uh, I talked about that yet. Maybe, maybe I didn't. Ethiopian, Ethiopian light, finishing up that, finishing up the bag of that that uh, I've been enjoying all week. Should be gone today. Uh, I did get very, very stocked up on coffee this month when, when my order came in. I was like, holy shit. Um, and I was looking up in the cupboard. And I've been really, really dialing in one French press a day. It's, it's, um, it's, it fits into my time schedule. It fits into my caffeine schedule as far as how much I, I really need to consume in a day. Um, and then I looked in the cupboard and I was like, holy crap. I did some, some napkin math. I know I get when I use uh, 49 grams, 49-ish approximately grams of coffee beans when I grind up a French press, I can calculate it out. I get about nine French presses out of a pound. So, you know, roughly a pound a week. Uh, I was looking at my days and my schedule and kind of the days I stick around after dog walks, after everything. I don't have any errands to run. Like on Wednesdays, I run to town, do laundry, get groceries and all of that. But Tuesdays, I usually do a lot of show prep. Mondays, I'm around uh, catching up from the weekend and prepping for interview. And um, <laughs> and so I've I've come to the I've come to realize that I like a, a couple extra French presses those days uh, just to get me through Mondays. You know, you got a case of the Mondays, and then uh, Tuesdays back to back start that week off all caffeinated up, and uh, it's working out. So I'm going through about a pound a week. 
And then uh, after the fact, um, on the weekend, I'm getting caught up with all the extra, all the extra beans I got up in the cupboard right now. So, so whoa, Backwoods Butcher, good morning. How we doing? Uh, oh, you, you caught the clue there. I don't know if you saw it in the chat or if you uh, saw it next to my name there, but hashtag lightning to get you in. Blakesley Acres, I don't see you dropping in. Pip and uh, MSU Rifle, if you're still around, hit that hashtag lightning and make sure we give that 20K away today. Um, what else? What else do we have going on? Oh, big weekend this weekend, guys. Huge weekend. Um, one of the biggest weekends of my year, every year. Uh, it's It's something I look forward to. Uh, I wait all year for this this moment. <laughs> She's over there rolling her eyes and shaking her head. Um, it's Corey's birthday this weekend, and it's actually on the weekend, uh, which is cool. We we've always kind of done our own thing for birthdays and holidays and and whatnot. We don't really get each other gifts. We spend time with each other. We uh, we man like. The other day I looked at her and was like, what do you want for your birthday? She's like, I think I'm going to order boots. I was like, you're going to order boots regardless. She's like, yeah, but it's close to my birthday. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that works. That works. So birthday weekend this weekend. Uh, I'm sure that uh, I will will end up going out to eat uh, at least once. Um, but hanging out and spending time with Corey. And uh, she's finally going to be 30. Finally, I have a wife in her 30s. And um, yes, I am 45. So <laughs> I told her I was going to say she's getting, she's going to be 30. Um, and she said, those guys will never believe that. <laughs> uh, guys, I think she looks young. I do. I really do. She is definitely a lot younger than me, um, whether I'm being facetious. Uh, <laughs> whether I am being uh, facetious about the actual age or not, she is. Uh, She's definitely a young flower compared to me. And I was glad to uh, find her at the at the point I did because she was super young when I found her. <laughs> legal, guys, legal. Um, uh, she was definitely legal when I found her, but uh, man, made an old man feel special that she was attracted to me for sure. Oh, um, uh, Hunter said his is only 10 years younger. What are we, seven? Seven ish, eight, depending on the time of year, because we're uh, we're about almost opposite birthdays. So you know, at some points, I'm way older than her, and not so bad other times of the year. So anyway, Corey, Corey's uh, backwards butcher says cradle robber. I'm pretty. Sure, isn't your wife a cradle robber too, or is she? Or are you guys the same age? I'm pretty. Uh, I for some reason I feel like you told me that she's older than you, um, but. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. We hang out. Uh, usually for both our birthdays, we don't do anything really crazy special. We just like to spend time with each other, whether it's birthdays or not. And um, so we have an excuse to go do something. And, and um... uh... <laughs> K-Bong says, uh, Vig Vigas, Vigas, Vigas. Is that a, a barefoot shoe brand that you've seen? Uh, she went with the Vivo Vivo barefoot uh, hiking shoe uh, hiking boots. That's um, she wanted to she wanted to stick with the barefoot. She looked and looked and looked, and basically all she could find was ordering them from the factory. And uh, most of the barefoot shoes and and boots that you're going to find are come out of Europe. When we ordered our um, Vibrams and our Skinners and our Wildlings, I'm pretty sure two out of the three came out of directly out of Europe. Um, eh, <laughs> and um, so when um, when we ordered them, it was kind of like, "What the hell am I going to do if they don't fit?" Uh, the shipping back to, to the European factory was not included like it is on Amazon and everything we do locally where, you know, it's just quick, easy and cheap to mail it within the, the U.S. And so we ordered them. It all worked out fine. Uh, but with these work with these boots, she wasn't sure how they were going to fit. She looked into them. She read the reviews she read and she knew that they fit a little small. I think they run a little small. 
but she didn't know how small she was worried about spending a significant amount of money because I think they're upper hundreds. I think they were like pushing two hundred pushing two hundred dollars for a pair of hiking boots, which isn't bad, but it's a significant amount of money when you can't go put your feet in them and uh, see what they actually feel like. And so she was watching on Amazon. They were never available, never available in her size. She's like, this is like stupid. They just probably have the listing up or something. Uh, and finally, she was clicking in the other day and she's like, hey, my size is there. Order them today. Order them today. And so she um, she put them in the cart. I ordered them up. And unfortunately, they're not going to be here by her birthday. But happy birthday, Corey. You're getting your barefoot shoes that you can actually return if they don't fit. And uh, Amazon's return policy will come in handy if uh, if they're not a, a sure fit for sure. Uh, Brian's going to be like, yeah, box them up. Let's send them back because I don't want her to have to deal with them and um, then be unhappy. So got to keep the wife happy. Got to keep the wife happy. Oh, a Virgo. <laughs> got it. She's a, right on the line. she's a Libra, dude. <laughs> she's a Libra. That she's right on the line. Sorry. Sorry, K Bonk. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks. Thanks, K Bonk, for tell sharing your uh sharing your uh, your sign because then we got to talk about Corey's shoes. <laughs> and that's just the way this uh, show goes for sure. Uh K Bonk says he's the 19th. So well, happy belated birthday there, sir, earlier this week. Um, <laughs> backwards wondering since he was wondering how long I was gonna walk that shoe thing before I realized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, it's Friday for sure. It is definitely Friday, Mondays and Fridays, and uh, the other three days of the week. I'm kind of out of it. <laughs> and this. This is why we don't start uh, the topic until 15 minutes after, after I've had some coffee and my brain starts working. Backwards Butcher, yes, you are the dumb one. <laughs> you are for sure. What does that make me? Slightly above that. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, happy belated k Bonk and uh, Pip and all the crew are dropping happy birthdays in here for you. I uh, I can't read them all. There's just so many. Like, I would have to spend the rest of the show reading all the happy birthdays for you. Oh, man. What else? What else? Along with uh, spending time with my beautiful bride this weekend on her birthday weekend, we're going to uh, head out to Toolman Tim's. I'm going to head out today and uh, do some more uh, hand clearing, path clearing, marking. And then I am hopefully getting... Um, Hopefully, I'm getting my uh, my wife to come out this weekend and hang out so I can run chainsaw. Uh, we're both very cautious with that, me going out there, seeing we don't have cell signal, and um, I have our only vehicle with us. So I don't want to be laying there with a cut leg, with a tourniquet on it, or uh, waiting and, um, and, and just waiting for help and not being able to get out. Saw accidents happen chain slip um whatever kick back and i she she talked me into it and i agree i i agree just for safety's sake that she probably have two people out there when when work and running saws so hopefully this weekend get some saw time in i got the saw ready out and uh, and and available yesterday i also dug through the truck and grabbed all our um all our hand tools that we kept as far as like rakes and um and clearing equipment shit like that um the brutus the barber beefcake uh loppers and all sorts of rakes and things like that the, the few things that we kept in the back of the front of the bed of the truck the back of the front the back of the front the front of the back of the bed like way up in the front that are all buried and i have to unload the whole truck um and uh and yeah so unloaded the truck got the the saw out got the saw ready I do have to pick up a small gas can to do mixed gas. I have gas, I have oil, I have bar oil, and I have no one or small gallon container to uh, to mix the mixed gas for the saw. And I was thinking about why I didn't have one, and I realized that um, it completely slipped my mind. And I think my thought process was if I needed to use that saw in emergency, 
I have two five gallon buckets or two five gallon, um, not buckets, uh, gas cans and enough, um, two stroke oil to mix five gallons. So I think my, my reasoning was if I was in an emergency, I'd be able to mix it up. And if I wasn't in an emergency, I'd have time to go get like a one gallon can for that. So, um, <laughs> Backwood said, did I take it out of the truck just to put it back in the truck? I took it out of the truck to put it in a different place in the truck where it was more accessible. And I also took the saw out and did some servicing to it and, um, and checked on the blade or checked on the chain sharpness and things like that. So no, I didn't just take it out to put it back in. Um, Hunter asked if I wore leathers, I don't have any leathers and, um, I really should, I really should. I went through, uh, the whole time on the farm and always wanted to grab them. And I didn't, um, I didn't ever pick any up. I really should. It is, uh, it is definitely a safety feature. Uh, I am more, uh, more conscious and, and slow down. I think if I had leathers, I uh, probably wouldn't wait for Corey. I think that is the determining factor, and I just never picked them up. Bad on me. Bad on me. I know. It's very important when running saws, but yes, yes, uh, living on the edge. Kyle says, Kyle says, don't worry. Um, <laughs> live fast and take chances. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. It was the amount of, I think it was the amount of clearing that I actually did the amount of saw work I actually did on our property compared to, uh, picking up the leather. So, yeah. Uh, uh assless chaps. <laughs> yeah. I would always thought of that, that I wanted to get the leathers and just wear them around the house for Corey. And, um, that's probably why we never bought them because she just had that thought in her head. Oh, all right, guys. Hold on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop off here for just a second, and then we will uh, roll into that topic of the day. Oh, all right, guys. How are we doing? How are we doing? Um, photo shoot. <laughs> he wants me to take a photo shoot and um, make a calendar of the assless chaps. Dude, I don't think you want that. I really don't. <laughs> Maybe you do. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, anyway, guys, if you're in the audience and you haven't hit that hashtag lightning, be sure to do that. Let me peek over here. Uh, we're uh, more than halfway there for the qualification of the drawing. So if you got any friends that might be awake right now that you want to come in to uh, give them a chance and uh, pick up 20,000 Satoshis this morning, we are talking about lightning and that's what I'll be giving away. But first, I like to bring a um, every day I'd like to bring products or services related to the topic that when you purchase or use them, you help support the lots project. And if you're looking for a Bitcoin hardware wallet, that prioritizes security and convenience, the Blockstream Jade is your answer. It's compact, user-friendly, and designed for optimal security of your Bitcoin assets. It's available with a 10% discount using a discount code, the Lots Project, and you use and after you use my link. Link is down in the video description and the audio description. Don't miss this golden opportunity to secure your Bitcoin. Find that link, like I said, in the show notes and find lots more recommended products and services at thelotsproject.com under product reviews. All right. All right. Blockstream Jade. And I am working on those videos. I, I know I, I keep saying it, but I want them to be good. And I have a pile of them to make because um, I kind of talked about this. I think it was on the content creator roundtable with Toolman Tim. I'm really good for making a video and mentioning more videos I'm going to make about the topic and never doing the follow-up videos. So uh, with the complexity of all the videos I have to do for the, the Jade, uh, basically walking through all the steps, um, different videos that just don't make sense to do get together, 
I'm trying to do them all, get them filmed, and then edit them all, release them all at the same time so they can link together. Um, it's interesting because I'm trying to do something that's very secure and private publicly um, and make sure um, make sure that I'm not exposing myself for any security risks. Uh, Kbank was wondering if the Jade shows your cost basis of the Bitcoin you have bought and the date. Um, I don't. The the Jade itself does not. Um, Blockstream makes a software wallet that interacts with the Jade. It's called Blockstream G or Green. Excuse me. Uh, I will have to look into that. I haven't really noticed or paid attention to that. Kbank, that's a great question. Um, I need to write it down here. If you guys give me two seconds. Um, that is a great question. And that's uh, that's something that I also need to talk about in one of these. One of these Bitcoin general topic shows is cost basis and really looking at when you earn Bitcoin for things. This was the biggest deal that I saw with the fold card where you earn Bitcoin back uh, in rewards. It wasn't the one percent back. It wasn't the spins. It wasn't the it wasn't the adding extra satoshis for this purchase or that purchase. It was the fact that when I got my reward, if I spent say it was one percent, like they've gone all they've had to go all screwy with the reward system on fold. Here's a little fold thing before we get into lightning. Um, the full debit card, you use it, you get rewarded for every dollar you spend in, in Bitcoin back. Um, they've had to adjust the reward system, uh, over time, just because of outside factors. Like they have to be a sustainable com company. <coughs> they can't give away more than they make. And a lot of people got angry. A lot of people felt, uh, like, oh, this isn't any good anymore. This, that, and the other thing. That's great. Whatever you do, you. I'm still stacking sats with Fold. Um, I know how much I pay a year. There's a free membership and there's a plus membership that increases your rewards. Uh, it's a hundred dollars a year. If I can't make a hundred dollars next year in Bitcoin, I've already covered my hundred dollars for like nine years in the Bitcoin I made in the first year. So I'm not really worried about that. I'm trying to use it to the most of its advantage. Trying to Every time the new, um, every time the new rules come out, it's just an adjustment to use them as much as you can. Uh, full um, Hunter says it was really good there in the beginning on Fold. It was. It was fantastic. It was unbelievably good, uh, and that was the thing. If you did not see that writing on the wall, that man, this isn't sustainable. Um, that this is a beginning ramp up. And you didn't take advantage of it if you sat back and uh, you didn't use it. Uh, and then the rules changed. They have to. I mean, I'm not making excuses for them. I just understand what's going on. Um, they explain exactly why they lower lower reward rates and that. But here's the big thing. And it goes back to where Kbonk was talking about cost basis. Um, when you get Bitcoin as a, say, reward and I'll do it plain math. Say you get 1% back. I spent $100. I get a dollar back. When you get paid in Bitcoin, you get a dollar's worth of Bitcoin that day. So if Bitcoin is worth $25,000 on the day, one Bitcoin is worth $25,000 on the day you get it, you get your reward, you get a fraction of that Bitcoin. You get a dollar. Uh, I can't even do the math in my head. It's, it's so small. But now you have that Bitcoin. You have that Bitcoin. I don't know if I can exp expand the math in my head right now. Let's say you got one Bitcoin as a reward uh, and it's worth $25,000. So you get, uh, what is it? 1% uh, uh, 2.5 2 million, 250 million. Whatever it is, you got one Bitcoin as a reward. It's worth $25,000. And you have that Bitcoin regardless of if the, the value of Bitcoin goes up or down. It can go down. I'm not saying it's always going to go up, but at $25,000, I think it's safe that eventually we are going to increase in value of that Bitcoin. 
I already returned or earned my reward. The value of my reward changes, but the amount of my reward doesn't. You're getting it in a different asset that that raises and lowers in value independently of the reward you're getting it off of. So when Bitcoin now is worth $50,000, I actually got 2%. When Bitcoin is worth $75,000, I got 3%. The value of my reward is increasing in the background, especially if I just stack it. Um, if you go from using a debit card where you're 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 getting zero rewards back from using it, or you're getting airline miles but you don't fly, you're getting uh, gift cards to places you don't use. Man, switch to the fold card and just stack them away. That's what I did. I opened a, I, I created a, a a totally separate wallet. That's the only thing that goes in there. Once a month, I just peel it off my Fold app and I send it there. It's just sitting, 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 stacking, 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 stacking. As I watch the price of Bitcoin go up, the price of my or the value of that wallet goes up regardless if I put more rewards in it. If I stop using Fold today and never put another uh, payout into that wallet and let it sit and the price of Bitcoin goes up, the percentage of my rewards goes up by default. Uh, K-Bong says, diminishing rewards is always something to consider with a lot of offers, thus importance of getting it off exchanges. Yes, get it off, get it in your wallet and then sit there and watch it. I mean, it is what it is. Do the math for you. If it makes sense for you, it makes sense for you. Um, I I didn't mind front loading a hundred bucks into there and, and make it a game and see if I can make a hundred and one dollars of Bitcoin. Well, I could just buy Bitcoin and, uh, and everybody gets concerned about um oh, there's fees to transfer money there. Not if you could plan a little bit, not if you can wait two days to spend the money. If you have a budget set up, you know what you're gonna spend on it, just just make some plans, make it easy on yourself. Just auto transfer it. I mean, I don't know. Make it work for you. Uh, I just kind of throw the options out there and let you know that it it isn't as bad as you may think it is. So if you want to join Fold, I do have a, a referral link that I get a little every time you swipe your card. Uh, I don't have the link. I didn't think we were talking about Fold today, so it's not in the, in the show notes. But uh, reach out. If you're interested in Fold, you want to talk about it more, or you're interested in getting signed up, just reach out, email me, message me, anything, and uh, we'll get you hooked up, and I can explain it to you further if you want. But anyway, this show is about Lightning, the Lightning Network, and how it changes everything in Bitcoin. Um, what is Lightning? Uh, you hear Bitcoin, you hear BTC, you hear crypto, you hear Ethereum, you hear all these different names, and you're new, and you're like, okay, well, let's try to figure it all out. First, I used to play in a lot of different cryptocurrencies. I used to explore them. I used to look at them. I used to buy them. I used to sell them. I used to try to make money off them. And at some point, I realized there was one that was better than the rest. After the invention of something after that, I shouldn't say invention, the implant implication, imp, implication, implementation, implementation of something. So Bitcoin, I always thought was the king. It was around from the beginning, um, but it did have some limitations. The, the draw to some other cryptos was that it made up for the shortcomings of Bitcoin. Some of the shortcomings of Bitcoin were transaction costs, transaction times, um, and privacy to a concern, anonymity to a, uh, to a point. Um, it, anonymity in, in crypto is not my thing. I'm not trying to use it to hide anything. I'm trying to use it because I think it's a better vehicle for wealth. Uh, but some people are trying to hide their shit. They're trying to play shadow games. They're trying to be sneaky and secret squirrel and spy games. Uh, whatever you do, you, um, the anonymity part wasn't a big concern to me. 
uh, because I want it out there. I want to be able to say, yes, this is mine. And you were dumb because you didn't do it. Uh, that's when I, I have my own my own island or something and, and I don't have to be nice anymore. Um, anyway, anyway, the limitations to Bitcoin were you weren't going to walk into, I mean, you could, but you weren't going to walk into a coffee shop and say, hey, I want my large venti blah, blah, blah latte. Um, and they're like, okay, cash or credit. You're like, I want to, I want to pay with Bitcoin. You pay, uh, if you've used Bitcoin at all, or if you've heard about it, it takes a while for the transaction to go through to actually clear. Um, it's really good at uh, posting a transaction, but until it's confirmed, it can be 10 minutes. It can be more than that. Are you going to want to stand there and wait 10 minutes for your payment to go through <coughs> your payment? To process to get your 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 coffee and your scone, your coffee and your donut, your coffee and your egg sandwich. You stand there and wait and wait and wait and wait, and they're not going to start making it until your payment processes. Because what if what if it de declines or doesn't go through? Then they're going to have to give it to you anyway. Um, so you're not going to wait the time period. The fees for a transaction of Bitcoin made it. It, it wasn't impossible. It wasn't unreason. It was unreasonable for a cup of coffee to pay and wait to pay the fees on a Bitcoin transaction for a couple bucks and to wait the time. It just made it impractical. Um, some other cryptos popped up. I was a big fan of Algorand. Uh, Bitcoin Cash was something that that popped up that uh, was was supposed to take care of the speed issue of Bitcoin. Uh, a lot of cryptos really focused on the the shortcomings of bitcoin and it was almost like a it was almost like i felt that my bitcoin was where um bitcoin was my store of wealth the other cryptos i were was using was either to make wealth which i i just decided is a bad idea at this point um or for functionality. So I would take my Bitcoin and I would put it in Bitcoin Cash or Algorand when I wanted to buy a purchase, when I would go buy pork from uh, from my pork person that that took cryptocurrency. I would I would convert it into something that was quicker and cheaper to use. Uh, it was all math. Well, Lightning Network Lightning Network added on to the Bitcoin the base Bitcoin network. Lightning is a protocol on top of that, that basically solves the issues that Bitcoin had. Now, if you listen to the first episode on Bitcoin in the new show format, I talked about how it basically works, how blockchain works. And I described it as a big Lego wall. And each block, literally block, was a layer going onto that wall that locks everything in below it takes the it takes the block it puts all the single transactions in the block over the over the time period when it's time for the block to close it gets put onto the the wall the math problem that i talked about is solved it includes math problems from and answers and new problems from the whole block underneath the new one basically if this problem is solved, it verifies everything below it. And if anything is wrong below it, it doesn't work. This is why it takes time. This is why Bitcoin was slow. It takes money or takes fees to pay those miners to solve that math problem. These were the sticking points. The Lightning Protocol was added on. And what you're going to want to think about the Lightning Protocol is now those little blocks that I was talking about, you know, when Legos, you have the, the single blocks, the doubles, the big squares, things like that. Now we can take a little block, one of those single blocks, and we're going to take that, we're going to hold it up here, and we're going to do an ass load of transactions back and forth. Bam, 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 bam. There's no low, 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 almost insignificant fees back and forth, little tiny amounts, fast, super fast. We're going to record them all in my little, my one Bitcoin transaction. 
boom, 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 all a bunch of transactions. Say Corey and I want to send a bunch of Bitcoin back and forth. I don't know why. Um, or Kyle uh, and I, um, we want to do this. It gets chain, It gets all recorded. And then when we're done or the next block or whenever it makes sense, that is added into that next block that's going onto the wall. K-Bong says, like cement, blocks are cured by math. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, interesting, interesting, uh, interesting analogy there. But anyway, basically, another way to put this with the Lightning Protocol is when you go to the bar, everybody's been to a bar. You've been to a bar, whether you drink or not, you've been to a bar, you understand the concept. You walk into the bar, it's a busy Friday night, and you uh, you have your credit card, and the credit card... Uh, you walk up to the bar, the bartender is like, Hey, how's it going? What do you want? And you're like, I want a whiskey Coke. Um, and the guy's like, okay, do you want to pay uh, cash or credit? You're like, I, all I got is my card. He's like, it's a 10% fee every time I swipe your card. And you're like, holy shit. That's, that's wow. Um, that's a lot. He's like, yeah, but if you open a tab, it's only 10% if you when we run it once, we'll just add up all your drinks and we'll run it once at the end of the night. What's that called? We're running a tab, right? We're going to run a tab. We're going to keep track of all the cons the, all the, the transactions in between. And then we're going to, um, then we're going to put the transaction through at the end. And we're only gonna have to pay one fee instead of fee after fee, after fee, after fee, after fee, after fee. After fee. We're only going to have to run our card once. We're only going to have to stand there and wait for him to run our card. The phone to dial, blah, blah, blah. Stand there, wait, 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 wait. Bring the receipt over, sign the receipt, give it back to him. Now we're only going to have to do that process once. Now I can walk up to the bar and I can go, hey, give me another rum and coke, put it on my tab. Boom, gone, gone. And it, like in actuality, <coughs> the percentage fee is, is kind of a bad example because it doesn't necessarily add up in the end, uh, on a, on a transaction, you're, 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 yeah, yeah. That take that fee out of the, out of the equation. That was a little, um, that wasn't in my notes. It just popped into my head this morning and I hadn't thought it out and it doesn't really make sense. I apologize. Um, but anyway, then at the end of the night, you run the card, it gets added to the block. It gets taken out of your bank account all at once. We made all these small transactions super fast. And now we're going to process it where I'm going to stand there. I'm going to give him a tip. I'm going to fill out the sheet. I'm going to sign it. He's going to go over. He's going to enter all the information. All this time and all this transaction is now an on-chain Bitcoin transaction. And basically on-chain would be your full Bitcoin transaction when we're adding to the blockchain. Off-chain would be what you would refer to as a lightning transaction as something that's on the tab that's being accumulated in a node, in a channel. A channel is what uh, the, techni the technical terms for this. It, it is doesn't really matter for the explanation. But that tab is like the lightning channel where we're keeping track of all those transactions. And then that final running of the card is like adding it to the block on chain. So I think that kind of is a visual representation of what lightning is. What does it do? What does it? Oh, wait, hold on one second. You're going to ask a question. Well, what if, what if my cards declined? What if I don't have enough money to cover my tab? Now, I don't know how many people have been in the, in the restaurant industry. I don't know how many people have ever been in a situation where they've opened a tab uh, at a bar. Uh, and as, on the consumer side, like as the bartender, I was supposed to warn people of this. A lot of times it didn't happen. You've probably run into this before where you get your card swiped and it authorizes a certain amount of money. Most of the bars I worked at would authorize $100 if your tab, when I was ringing it into the, the system, would get over $100, it would authorize another $100. It was pre-checking to see if you had enough money. So in the end, the bar didn't get screwed over and you didn't have any. 
the way Lightning protects you protects the the integrity of the network is that when someone opens a Lightning channel, when someone opens, um, and you're not doing this personally, these tabs are opened by others. Um, you can open them yourself, but you don't need to to participate in this network. But these channels are open, and the way they work is basically they put money up. They put Bitcoin up. They put Lightning up. So they say, I want to be able to run uh, one Bitcoin worth of transactions through my channel. They have to provide the liquidity for that to happen in the meantime. They have to provide the the um, stability there in the fact that if Brian decides to run some scam on the Lightning Network, and when we go to reconcile all the when we go to pay the tab, I actually didn't have that. I didn't have enough that the person running the channel is going to take responsibility for that. And it's going to cover it in the end. Bad 41 minutes today. Um, they're still going to match. Uh, it's going to get covered. It's uh, it's the security. Uh, it has to have money in. It has to have uh, Bitcoin in, Bitcoin out. It has to be there to work to be set up. Um, it's basically pre-authorizing the credit card, except it's not authorizing your credit card. It's just making sure the network is liquid. The network is uh, uh, stable and be able to handle this. Um, so that's basically <laughs> MSC Rival says I was doing so good. Yeah. Oh man, this morning it was so shaky before the show went live. I was like, man, I'm not even gonna make it through the intro, and the shit's gonna it's gonna pause. We'll see how it goes for the next couple of minutes here before we end up and uh, wrap things up. But anyway, let's uh, let's move on to um, why is this so important? Why is the Lightning Network important to Bitcoin? I think you can kind of you can kind of understand just by the preface of the fact that, you know, I didn't use Bitcoin to pay for my pork because it took too long for the transaction to go through. There are too many fees. Um, man, if you can wrap your head around this lightning, the the speed of paying with Bitcoin has now it's not an issue. Um, literally anybody in this audience that wins that 20K, wins the 20,000 Satoshis if we give it away, instantly can get paid. Um, when I first started messing around with the Lightning Network, I was using two different phones uh, and sending myself, practicing, understanding what's going on. Literally, you're working with a fraction of a cent when you're working. You can send down. Here we go. <laughs> Lightning. You, you're not sending whole Bitcoins. Bitcoins, you never had to buy a whole Bitcoin. People felt that you had to buy Bitcoins, $25,000. I can't afford $25,000. It doesn't work like that. It's infinitely divisible down to currently uh, one 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. And that, that, um, that denomination is called a Satoshi, a SAT, a uh, SAT after uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, that, that uh, the, the pseudonym that created Bitcoin. A Satoshi or a sat is one 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. So when um, a Bitcoin is worth a million dollars, a sat is going to be worth a penny. Weird that the math worked out that way, huh, guys? But anyway, right now at $25,000, when you're messing with a sat, um, when you're messing with a sat, it is insignificant. You can mess around with it. It's all going to be a long time. When's the last time you've been over to pick up a penny? I mean, I actually do, uh, but a penny. Uh, now think of uh, Bitcoin has to, well, that would be like, you know, what was that, 20x? 100, 100x? I, I can't even do that in my head at the moment. But um, to even be a penny. So messing around with this is um, is easy. It's easy. Um, Hunter says he plays games for MSATs, and MSATs are a thousand a thousand MSATs to a SAT. So they're they're going infinitely divisible below even Satoshi's. Um, 
so when you're messing around with this, sending it back and forth, you can learn, you can experience um, using Bitcoin. And what I was doing was I was setting up different wallets. I was seeing how they worked. I was exploring what I, I liked um, so I can advise others. And so I would have two separate phones and I would have two separate lightning wallets and they're anonymous. You can set them up wherever you want, whenever you want. Uh, there's no KYC. I'll go back to that, like um, being anonymous and, and there are ways around um, recording this, uh, being known. There's different uh, strategies in that. That's not what I'm into it for. So you might be able to find somebody else that can teach you how to do that. I am uh, I am more out there to to stack sats and and I I don't care if people know I have them I I want them I want them I want to be able to use them whenever I want I don't want to have to hide them and shuffle them around and play shadow games and all that shit so it is what it is but anyway I was learning these wallets and I had two phones next to each other and I think I did a TikTok of it a long time ago and I said something like. Hey, if I want to buy this pen, uh, how much, how many Satoshis for this? I was like, oh, it's a thousand Satoshis. And I had the two phones and I went, boop, 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 send 1,000, um, send 1,000 Satoshis. I hit send and I had both phones on my screen. I literally got the receive notification on the other phone. Before the confirmation came on my phone, just because it had um, it had some um, animation and stuff, it had a little had a little thing it did. It blew like confetti in the air, and it said, "Congratulations, you sent lightning." And it went through this couple second thing, and while that process, it was already on my other phone. Like you can't hand someone cash that fast. You can't count it out and hand it to them and have them count it back before a lightning transaction can go through <laughs> fast okay what was one of the reasons that we didn't we couldn't use bitcoin to buy coffee why we couldn't use bitcoin to buy a scone uh to to buy groceries it was you need to stand there and wait for the transaction to go through you need to have weird small talk or whatever for 10 minutes that would be that would be about the time till the end of this show standing waiting waiting lightning now is boom done out of the equation out of the equation fees <laughs> super affordable super affordable super fast um basically you're paying fractions of a cent for fees and they might be up a little bit now um so insignificant compared to sending bitcoin on chain that I don't even really look if you have enough in your wallet to cover it, you're never even going to notice it, really. Um, K-Bonk says it's seven to 10 days for a bank to clear a check. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think people stuck in that old floating check mode uh, think that Lightning is is a way to do that. Uh, and I think I covered that with when you open a channel, you have to have liquidity on both sides to protect the, the integrity of the transaction. But basically, uh, yes, yes. Um, Backwoods Butcher says, do we have to pay extra for you to expose yourself? Oh, you'll get plenty of exposure. Don't worry. You only got a couple weeks to wait. Don't worry. Uh, my goal, my goal is to actually get Kyle to have a Bitcoin on-chain wallet and Lightning wallet on his phone before the end of SRF. You guys think I can do it? You think I can teach that backwoods some bitch how to uh, how to use digital currency in a couple days? Maybe if I send him some. Maybe I say, "Hey Kyle, Kyle, you want a you want a piece of candy? Oh, you got to put a Bitcoin wallet on your phone." Oh man. So anyway, why is it important? It speeds shit up unbelievably fast. It lowers transaction fees uh, for those small transactions. And it really makes it viable for micro payments for um, very, very small payments. Like I said, a Satoshi 
where you're going to send in most lightning wallets. Hunter's playing games for less than this, but the lightning wallets that I'm interacting with, you can send one Satoshi. I can send one, one freaking Satoshi. And I mean, huh, 20,000 Satoshis. Okay, 20,000 Satoshis this morning when we give it away is going to be like $6, I think. 20,000 Satoshis. Uh, if you give me two seconds, I'll be able to tell you what one is. Um, waiting for a wallet to load, excuse me. But uh, yeah, so you're going to be able to use micro micro payments. You're going to be able to send fractions of a cent. You're going to be able to send... Um, oh man it won't let me um i'm sorry uh, 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 uh this is not working i don't know somebody look up what a sat is at this point it's not much it's not much but you're able to send that um what this makes possible is buying that scone buying that coffee cup of coffee it also makes tipping people sending money showing value for value when back when i started looking at lightning when lightning first started popping around it it was around for a long time hashtag gingerbread is hashtag lightning uh thanks for stopping in it looks like your comments got uh got erased from earlier from what pip said hashtag lightning um uh, anyway when i first started seeing lightning pop up uh, Josh, the renegade butcher and I, uh, we were, we were kind of diving in, talking a lot about crypto, uh, talking about, um, okay. Hunter says one Satoshi is 0, 0.00. So that would be, um, 0 0.01 would be one penny. This is 0 0.0002616. So that is um, uh, a penny, a tenth of a penny, two one hundredths of a penny you can send on Lightning. So you can cut your penny up into uh, one hundredths and send two of them to somebody. Uh, when we started diving into Lightning, uh, Gingerbread asked if we can send a portion of a Lightning sat. Send currently? I don't think so, but Hunter was mentioning. Hunter was mentioning that um, you can send there. Uh, there's games he interacts with that that deal in M sats, which is one sat for um, one sat for a thousand M sats. So it's coming. It's coming. I don't think we need to send less than uh, two one hundredths of a penny. But uh, Hunter, uh, thanks for putting that in there 3786 sats for a dollar currently so um josh and i were looking into this and we were we were looking yeah ish as the as bitcoin price changes the, the price of sats fluctuates greatly it's uh it's economies of scale there but um it's uh we were looking at the Lightning Network and we were exploring it and we were thinking about how we could use it. Um, and Podcast 2.0 Value for Value Network comes along. Uh, we started putting our podcast in a fountain where you were earning crypto for listening. You were able to send creators crypto now for because you enjoyed their content. You didn't have to go to YouTube and hit super chat, super like. By the way, you can do that here in any live that I have. Um, but you got to skip the you got to skip the middleman. We're now able to show value to people that we find value in what they're telling us, the videos they're making, the podcasts they're doing, um, the the blog posts they're they're putting out there. We're now able to exchange value to down to two one hundredths of a penny at a time. Fountain has a, a function where you can stream Satoshis to a podcaster as you're listening to them and stream them one sat. I think it goes down to one sat, one sat a minute. Basically, two one hundredths of a penny a minute. You know, when you're dripping water into a bucket, and it's going in one drop at a time. You look at it and say, man, that's going to take a lot of time for that bucket to fill. 
But if I put 500 faucets all dripping one drop over the same bucket, it fills up. It fills up. K-Bong says layers of peer-to-peer -peer commerce. Yes. It now makes it fast, convenient, and cheap for me to interact and buy things from my peers. I'm no longer having to worry about Visa, MasterCard, American Express, credit card payments, credit card transactions, going to the ATM, none of this. Fast, quick, cheap. <coughs> That's why Lightning is important. That's what it's done. What is Lightning Protocol? In my opinion, it's the alt killer. It made Bitcoin king. If Bitcoin wasn't king before Lightning, if if it was in in flux, whether it was going to be the long term king of crypto, the original, the one, the only, if it was up in the air, if it is up in the air, we annihilated that thought, right? Right with Lightning. Lightning is the alt killer. It made any reason and functionality for an alt to be used for other than blockchain, blockchain uh, data storage, things like that. There are definitely other uh, uh, use cases for crypto and blockchain. But as far as monetary, currency, money, Lightning made Bitcoin the only thing you need. And it's not done yet. It's not done yet. Gingerbread Farms asked if 100K we hit Penny Parity. Um, no, that was an MSAT versus a SAT. Uh, Penny Parity with Bitcoin and Satoshi's comes at $1 million Bitcoin. There's 100, 100 million Satoshi's in one Bitcoin dollar or Penny to Penny to uh, Penny Parity with a Satoshi is at $100 million Bitcoin. Um is Xavier Hawk still pushing Bitcoin cash? I don't know. Xavier Hawk and uh, Sal Mayweather, uh, all guys I, I completely respect in the crypto space. Uh, been in it way longer than me and, 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 and bigger minds than me for sure in the space. Maybe. I don't know. I, it doesn't matter. I don't listen to anything um, other than Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Lightning Network and, and everything associated with it satisfies everything i need in a cryptocurrency it satisfies everything i need in uh in a, a currency in my money um that's it lightning is the alt killer lightning is the one that made it so you don't need anything else hunter says a uh, point of clarification he earns msats and can only cash out in full satoshis yeah that makes sense that makes sense Basically, they're running you a tab. They're running a micro lightning network uh, uh, within the game. And when you accumulate, you're able to take out in. Um, um, take out in full sats. But yeah, and I, I, I haven't heard much from uh, Xavier either. K-Bonk uh, K -Bonk was wondering if uh, if uh, Xavier was still around. He had fire on going on and that just really wasn't my crowd. So I kind of dipped out of that. I don't know if it's still up and going or whatnot. Um, I didn't really hit most of my notes today because it's just a it's a it's a winding big topic to dive into. So I'll definitely be doing more crypto episodes on on lightning um, and Bitcoin. I probably will dive into some others and use case scenarios for them now. Maybe why I got into the different currencies I did, why I like them, why I invested in them and uh, and what happened there. Um <laughs> The fighting on Unloose the Goose. Yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, let me check over here. Man, we didn't qualify for the drawing. We can still do it. See who would have won. We're going to bump up to 30,000 next week. 30,000 Satoshi seems to be that tipping point where it gets people to uh, gets people to put that lightning hashtag uh, in uh, the Sats giveaway in. Um, uh, all in K Bong says the all in podcast has an interview with Brian Armstrong from Coinbase. It's a good conversation about the future. Interesting. Interesting. Hey, let's pop this up here, do this drawing, get the hell out of here for the week. Um, man, mute drawing, not gonna, not gonna give it away. Uh, K Bong says give those thumbs up for sure, but let's draw, see who would have won if we did give it away. I hope it's John or I hope it's, uh, I hope it's, uh, Kyle. 
Gingerbread. Gingerbread would have won. Gingerbread. Sorry, man. Um, we will uh, we will dump that 20K back into the pot. Next week, we will gi be giving away. Um, <laughs> get Scrambling to come and cheat. Yeah, 30K next week. Uh, Scrambling donated it back in last week because we did qualify. And now... <laughs> Now uh, we didn't, so it's going back in 30K next week. Um, other than that, guys, I hope you had an awesome week. I think we're rolling back into Bitcoin on Monday. I think I continue. I did a random draw for all those uh, general topics, and I think I think we ended up Bitcoin Friday, Monday, and then the following Friday. So two back-to-back -back and then a long time without a crypto episode. So if you don't like them, I apologize. I think uh, I'm trying to spread the topics around to... Uh, hit everything that I, um, everything that kind of revolves around my life. So let's talk about more lightning and Bitcoin on Monday. Have a little bit more conversation about that. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I hope you get a bunch of shit done. Be sure to uh, head on over to the, the Telegram chat if you're interested in getting started in lightning. If you've never heard of it, never used it, uh, pop into the Telegram chat at t.me slash lots chat. When I uh, welcome you to the group, say, Hey, man, I'm just here to uh, learn about some lightning. We'll send you some. We'll hook you up. Uh, plenty of people in the community members, we, uh, community, we do value for value exchange. You put a good idea, a good answer. You make somebody laugh. We can tip you in Satoshi's. Uh, Telegram comes with its own built-in wallet and all that functionality, so you don't have to worry about getting that set up. And we will walk you through it step by step and uh, toss you some to get started just because we're good like that. Check it out, t.me slash lots chat other than that have a great weekend get a bunch of shit done hang out uh enjoy time away if you need some downtime um man have a good one if you'd like to participate in the live comments of the show you can always join the live recording monday through 6 a.m central on youtube facebook twitch and twitter and monday night 6 p.m central for lots to talk about interview every monday night if you enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with others. You can find the post about the episode along with links to all my social media services I offer, recommended products, and companies I am affiliated with at thelotsproject.com. Be sure to listen on one of your favorite podcast 2.0 value for value podcast players like Podverse or Fountain.fm where you can get more into the Lightning Network. Make it a great day, guys. Make it a great day weekend and we will end up talking to you on monday I can feel the